Good afternoon. It's a pleasure to be here. We're gathered this afternoon for a very special opportunity to recognize one of the many champions for the rule of law and human rights fighting for justice for all around the world. The World Justice Project inaugurated its Rule of Law Award in 2011 to recognize valiant efforts to carry out groundbreaking work to advance respect for the universal principles represented by the catch-all phrase, rule of law. These core principles remind us first that all of us, including governments, individuals and businesses, are accountable under the law. Second, that the laws are just, fairly applied, and protect fundamental rights. Third, that they are adopted and enforced in accessible and open processes. And fourth, that justice is delivered impartially by independent and neutral actors. The previous winners of the World Justice Project's Rule of Law Award were recognized for upholding these principles in exemplary ways. They have spearheaded successful efforts to right historic wrongs, to uphold fundamental rights, political, economic, and social rights of marginalized groups, and to expand the poor's access to legal services. On this occasion, we proudly recall their remarkable contributions to our shared mission of strengthening the rule of law and realizing justice for all. Justice Arthur Shaskelson of South Africa, Aruna Roy of India, Dr. Shirin Ebadi of Iran, the Brack Center of Bangladesh, and President Jimmy Carter and the Carter Center. The timing for this year's award could not be more important. Over the last several years, the world has witnessed an alarming degrading in respect for key rule of law principles. As reflected in the World Justice Project's annual rule of law index, more countries declined than improved in overall rule of law performance for a second year in a row. Scores for checks on government powers and criminal justice have declined markedly. At the same time, thanks God, we have fought for and won important gains, including forging a global consensus represented by the Sustainable Development Goals for realizing justice for all and we kept these trends in mind as we considered who should receive our highest honor this year. Let me now welcome my fellow World Justice Project board member, Peter Stoyanov, former president of Bulgaria, to announce this year's nominee. President. Thank you very much, Your Honor. Thank you very much for setting the context for today's award ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor on behalf of the World Justice Project to announce that Dr. Adam Bodnar and the Office of the Commissioner for Human Rights of Poland are the recipients of this year's Rule of Law Award. Dr. Bodner began his five-year term as Poland's Ombudsman in 2015. His office is responsible for serving as Poland's independent legal institution, 
responsible for monitoring citizens' rights and intervening when such rights are infringed in accordance with Poland's constitution. Dr. Bodner has an impressive record of human rights scholarship at the University of Warsaw in Poland and legal activism from his many years with the Helsinki Foundation for Human Rights. Almost immediately upon his appointment by Poland's parliament, Dr. Bodner and his team were confronted with an alarming series of political and legal attacks on Poland's independent judicial authorities. Through a series of executive and parliamentary maneuvers, Poland's governing party sought to undermine the independence of the Constitutional Tribunal and dismiss justices of the Supreme Court. The government also pushed through a number of provisions that impinged on citizens' rights to information and assembly, including greater state control of public media and restrictions on freedom of protest. Throughout this period, Dr. Bodner and his staff have played a highly visible and outspoken role in defending Poland's constitutional system of checks and balances, as well as advocating for protecting citizens' civic rights to participate in public life. He has traveled throughout the country to hear firsthand how the Polish people want their constitutional rights defended and engaged in constructive criticism of government actions to undermine them. His office has also creatively intervened in the judicial system with strategic litigation designed to prevent attempts to infringe judicial independence and stood up repeatedly for the rights of women, migrants, and the LBGTQ community, among others. These principles stands against politicization of Poland's independent legal institutions and constitutional norms has generated hateful attacks and personal threats in state media and attempts by politicians to remove him and limit the Ombudsman's powers. His persistent courage, not only to defend the rule of law in Poland, but to look beyond the crisis to consider how to improve and strengthen the country's judiciary deserves our full encouragement and support. Unfortunately, Poland's crisis of faith in its liberal constitutional values is not unique. As documented in World Justice Project's Rule of Law Index, a range of countries, including Hungary, Serbia, and Bosnia and Herzegovina from this continent, as well as Nicaragua, Jordan, and the Philippines, are backsliding on their rule of law performance with direct harm to their citizens' abilities to create communities of peace and opportunity. It is therefore more important than ever to recognize how independent institutions like National Ombudspersons for Human Rights can serve not only as effective guardians of our cherished values, but as key agents for fulfilling the promise of realizing justice for all, which is actually the topic of our conference today. Dr. Bodner and his courageous staff are showing Europe and the world how to push back against these attacks and rebuild consensus for societies governed by just, by just laws and social peace. I want to congratulate Dr. Bodner and his staff and thank them for their dedication, their courage, and their commitment to the rule of law movement. So, according to scenario, now I have to present the award to Dr. Bodner. Please, Dr. Bodner, would you like to join me? And also, and also the Deputy Commissioner, Mr. Stanislav Trochu.
just to say good luck. According to the scenario now, we have to take a picture. On that side. On that, that side. side. Of the yeah. Not here. Here? Here. Okay. Here. That's okay. Here. Dr. Bodner. Okay. This side. Okay. So here. we have to move. We have to move. This side? Here. Oh. In the side? Okay. Dear Madam Chief Justice, uh, dear Mr. President, uh, dear honorable guests, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it is my uh, great honor to receive the, the World Justice Project uh, Rule of Law uh, Award. Uh, I would like to thank the award uh, committee for this uh, honorable distinction. Uh, and it is my particular honor because I am among a number of human rights defenders and uh, activists who are courageous in their daily work. Uh, and I'm extremely privileged to be with you, to learn from you, uh, to take uh, the best out of your experiences and bring it back to, to Poland uh, in order to repair the situation in my country. I would like to dedicate this award to Professor Karol Modzelewski, a great Polish hero who passed away this Sunday in the age of 81. Why Professor Karol Modzelewski? He was a historian and dissident who was imprisoned for eight years for his political beliefs during communist times. He was always fighting for democratic Poland, but he was not satisfied with changes after 89. He always claimed that Poland regained freedom, but it forgot about equality and brotherhood. Poland, over 20 years of democratic transformation, has reached the stage when liberal democracy stopped to meet expectations of the whole society. In his opinion, vulnerable and neglected people started to regard democracy as a machinery which is somewhere hiding the, some kind of a conspiracy of elites. And one of the reasons was not delivering justice to all of them. And such distrust of a quite huge part of the Polish society, according to Professor Modzelewski, it was more or less one third of the society, opened the way for populist narrative and attack on democratic and rule of law institutions after elections in 2015. And this attack is still ongoing. The ruling party is trying to create, as Karol Modzelewski put it, a police state with different instruments allowing to stay in power and controlling citizens. And currently, especially the judicial independence is at stake, but fortunately, Poland is a member state of the European Union, and the European Union has a number of instruments to stop the avalanche. As the Ombudsman, together with my colleagues, I try to do everything what is possible in order to save rule of law in my country. I know that rule of law is not a zero-sum game. And rule of law index by World Justice Project is a great tool to explain to the public opinion that the change is not happening overnight. States may slide into authoritarian rule as a result of series of actions which are not even sometimes noticeable to regular citizens on a daily basis. But after a few years, you are waking up in a completely different country. That is the reason why you have to be cautious, to be cautious almost every day. But you must also respond to the needs of the society. You must remember that rule of law guarantees should be of value for everybody on a daily basis. And my office tries to show its 
importance to citizens and importance of the rule of law value to citizens by regular visits in different regions of Poland. So over my time, I visited almost 200 cities where I organized different meetings with people consulting them on things or issues I should take on. By litigation of numerous cases, by submission of hundreds of interventions and recommendations. But I would like to underline that I treat this distinction as an important recognition for all rule of law defenders in Poland. And the Ombudsman is just one of them. And I treat this award as the solidarity of whole global rule of law community, not only with myself, not only with my office, but with all those who fight in Poland for freedom, human rights, and rule of law. For, as a solidarity with civil society, members of academia, judges, prosecutors, attorneys. I do believe that thanks to intensive work and international solidarity, we'll be able to overcome the current serious crisis. And if we succeed, our experience will be of great value for other countries and institutions facing similar attacks on judicial independence and constitutional order. This recognition is not only for myself, but for the whole Office of the Commissioner for Human Rights. The office has started to work in 1988, just one year before the democratic transformation. I am just the seventh ombudsperson. And I feel like a captain of a ship, of a big ship. When I will step down in September 2020, when my term comes to an end, this 300 staff ship will continue its cruise with such a great people like my deputy, Mr. Stanislav Trociuk. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Stanislav Trociuk is like a navigator of the office. He started his career 30 years ago uh, as an assistant to the first ombudswoman, Professor Ewa Wentowska. He was later on promoted, going higher, higher in this career ladder. And then he was appointed as the deputy ombudsman, and he is, in fact, deputy ombudsman of the four consecutive ombudspersons. He's a great legal mind with many successes achieved over years, including over 100 victories before the Polish Constitutional Court. And for the last four years, we are like brothers in arms in our fight for rule of law in Poland. So, Mr. Trociuk, the floor is yours. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the employers of Ombudsman Office of Poland, Adui, I would like to express sincere thanks for this honorable uh, distinction. The distinction is a sign that we do our job successfully, but it is also a sign that in Poland the, the rule of law and the protection of human rights are in crisis. It is only in crisis situations that the defenders of these values come to the fore. They are then perceived and arouse interest. In our work, we follow the principle developed by Professor Wentowska, first Polish ombudsman. She said that every ombudsman who wants to do his job well must first and for foremost resist the authorities and as strong and loud as possible. Sometimes he loses, sometimes he wins, like in life. However, the Ombudsman, understanding the situation and like it bad government, would be a denial of his own sense. Happy persons do not turn to ombudsmen. Our work usually involves encountering human harm and attempting to repair it. Bringing help to others gives satisfaction. This satisfaction is doubled if, as today, our work is knighted and appreciated. Once again, on behalf of the employers of the ombudsman office in Poland, Thank you for granted our.